マシマシはいどこ今、はい、あの四つのソーセージをパブテッサのディフローションしてたソーセージをえ、なになになにはい。え、はいはい。え、マジ？えー、yeah,、uh, the dog ate the fucking sausage that we left on the counter, and so now we don't have any sausage for her spaghetti pasta. Every ingredient contributes to the perfect bowl. My own philosophy of cooking is layering flavor. So as you're tasting it, it sort of attacks your palate. From all different places, and you really get a real flavor experience. Pull out! Get the fuck out of the goddamn fucking place! God damn it! The whole goal really was to take my intense passion for Japan and Japanese, and take my intense passion for cooking, and figure out how to blend them. My fantasy was to assimilate into Tokyo. When people say, "How you know? Why would you ever think you could succeed in a ramen shop in Tokyo?" It's because I I'm a confident chef, and I think I make good food. This ended up giving me all the things I dreamed of and more. I got to live in Japan. When I walked down the street, I was a respected member of the business community. The hook was that I'm a white guy making ramen, and you know I knew that people were going to come and check me out. I also knew that if I didn't nail it the first time, people would have walked out and never ever come back. Now that I'm in New York. I feel no differently. We working really hard to sell the, the ramen gospel because slurping noodles is fun. You can break my shio ramen down into eight basic components. The soup and the noodles would be the star. Everything else would be supporting characters. With my noodles, I've put a lot of thought into the amount of gluten in the flour, the amount of protein, which flours I use. I wanted them to have a textural experience and to have a certain amount of aromatic quality. I just think that noodles need to make an impression.、Uh, my soup is super clear tasting chicken and fish. I make a really simple chicken soup. It's whole chickens and water. That's it. Dashi is really what all Japanese cuisine is built on. That smokiness from the fish. You can really get this real sense of, of the depth of flavor. There's a tremendous amount of umami in it. You add a piece of fatty, warm chashu, and that bleeds into the soup. And as you're working through your bowl, it's a special treat. And I don't flavor it very much, even though it's just that one piece. When you eat it, it should make a big impact. You say, "Wow!" So shio ramen means salt ramen. The tare really is the main flavor bomb. So I use salt from several different regions of Japan, and I blend them together, and so you get this very complex saltiness that. Blends with the rest of the ingredients in the tare, which is really a sofrito, and so we can move on from there to the egg. I spent as much time getting my egg right as I did getting my noodles right. The yolk is as liquid as we can get it without the egg falling apart. Ramen without fat is not ramen. You need the fat to help the soup stick to the noodles. I use a very small amount. Whenever you talk to the ramen geeks, they always talk about punch. It's got to have punch. The fish powder gives it that next sort of kick of flavor. The scallion, the onion flavor enhances the whole soup, but it really does double purpose. It gives that ramen bowl a little step up to make it a little bit more sophisticated. One of the great things about ramen is it's the maverick cuisine. You can make noise while you eat it, and you can get messy, but it's all in front of you in that bowl. And when the bowl is empty, you're done. You're driving too fast, motherfucker.